Hello, hello, hello. What's everyone doing? Should I say hello or should I? Controller working, yes. How is the sound? I think the sound is it on the low side? Yeah, today is a sh late start, not like I wanted it to be, to be honest. It's just uh, my connection was not really stable. I've been testing it for a few hours now. Last hour it improved, so I decided to go live. Um, not really ideal, is it? So yesterday we introduced Kurodakambe and the Tachibanas. We spoke about Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Iyasu, and how the whole Sengoku Jirai started. Today we're gonna move forward with the game. But let's do some housekeeping first. We have a few levels to spend, but before that, I realized at the end of last stream that I completely neglected to discuss Nue. Now, Nue is this guy. Is a yokai, obviously. Started showing up uh, in literature around the late Heian period, which is uh, 794 to 1185, and was kind of um, famously mentioned in the Heike Monogatari, which is um, an epic that recounts the Genpei War, and that was a struggle between the Minamoto and Taira clans between 1180 and 1185, I think. And you can find an English translation of that epic. Uh, the tale doesn't really mention how New Way looks, it just mentions that it showed up as black smoke to the Emperor, and then it was killed by an arrow. And uh, that's why it's sometimes described as a bird of strange description. Maybe that's why it has feathers on its feet, in case you haven't realized. I only just noticed it, to be honest. But it's often depicted as having the Head of a monkey, limbs of a tiger, body of ta a tanuki, and tail of a snake. But I guess in this one they didn't really do the tanuki bit and just went for the tiger body. And yeah, that's one ugly monkey. It's kind of like the Japanese chimera, if you want to call it that. You know, the monster design is not actually bad. Like, I'm looking at the feathers and they seem pretty cool. No, they didn't give this cat uh, an asshole like in... Uh, in Neo 2. Alright, at the very end of the last mission, Alchibana mentioned that he's gonna introduce me to his uh, trainer, his teacher assortment ship, and that's Marumi Nagayoshi. So you're Anjin, not a bad looking guy, I'm Omai you say? I'm Marumi Nagayoshi, the greatest soldier in the world. I've heard about you from Lord Munishige. Forgot that I didn't take out that image. Hearing up bandits and yokai with techniques you picked up on your own, that's impressive stuff. How do you like to learn some real moves? Consider this your introduction to Taisha's School of Swordsmanship. You ready? Sure. Some, I am. Um, I already forgot the buttons. I should warm up before these streams. 
All right. They want me to learn skills. All right, I shall learn a skill. And go to a skill customization and swap. We didn't really swap there, did we? Getting hard to fight already. I don't know why Neo 1 never clicked for me in terms of combat, but Neo 2 did. The things I can do in Neo 2, I can't do in Neo 1 for some bizarre reason. Maybe it's just the weapons. Oh, nice work. This should give you something to work on for a while. No need to thank me, that fight taught me a few things about how you foreign samurai fight too. Either way, you're already more than my disciples can handle. I'll spar with you myself next time. Look forward to it, Saranjin. I will be. Alright, let's go to memory to memories, back to directory, and Marmi Nagayoshi. So this guy was born in 1540. Here is a, an illustration of him in the Higo province, which was uh, under the Sagara clan at the time. And he had a bit of a, well, the Sagara clan had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Shimazu clan, which is a clan to be one of the long-standing families in Japan. It's told technically there, but of course, uh, the government system doesn't really favor clans anymore. And uh, this guy was also known as Samarmi Kurando and Tessai at some point. His uh, earliest recorded battle achievement was at 15 under the Satsuma Domain, which was a loose organization in the provinces of Satsuma, Usumi, and Hyuga. He went on to get military training the following year at 16 before studying under the founder of Shinkage Ryu a sword school. That one is called Kami Izumi Isenokami Nobutsuna, which they also mention here. Now, this is his uh, teacher, in case you wanted to see an illustration of him. Now, this uh, school was all about duels, low positions, low, low postures, I should say, protecting the body, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, around that time, matchlocks were becoming more and more popular, firearms in general, and um, that style came to be kind of not very useful in combat anymore. So Kami Uzumi, the teacher, raised the posture, adjusted the way of holding the sword, and even used shorter swords to try and make rushing in easier against people who are using firearms. Uh, he's also credited with inventing the uh, Ikehada Shinai, which is a bamboo practice sword that they use, uh, and it replaced the Bakken, which is um, a wooden one. Now, the wooden one could actually kill you, this one couldn't, and it didn't uh, maim you for life. And uh, even Masashi was famed for using them a lot. Anyway, uh, back to this guy. At some point, he went on um, with his master to see the Shogun at the time, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, a name we'll mention later on in a future stream. Now, the Shogun was so impressed with them that he provided them with a letter of recommendation to the Emperor, and they went to see the Emperor, but it isn't really clear if they went on to serve at the palace, but uh, what that accomplished was it spread his name around. In 1566, he went on along with the his new students, now he was a teacher, and he went to Kyoto where he put up notices at mountains and temples to challenge passing martial artists with sword battle. But no one really took them up on this challenge. I don't know why, maybe because 
he was too good or just not many people were confident in their skill. And they just returned empty handed. I'm using me the teacher, this guy again, uh, kind of comforted him and gave him license to use the title Master of the Life Saving Sword, Master of the Killing Sword, even though he didn't really challenge anyone for it, which is why he goes around with the big banner. But I think that's kind of condescending. Like, oh yeah, you'll feel better. I'll, t I'll say you're the life saving sword. Whatever. Anyway, this guy was kind of a pretty good swordsman, and uh, he's relegated to be a tutorial guy, which doesn't really make sense, does it? Well, it kind of does, because um, at some point he went back home to serve the Sagara clan, as I mentioned before. And uh, one day the Shimazu clan, the biggest uh, enemy, attacked the Sagara clan and the Sagara lost their family, their, not family, their castle. And they needed somebody to blame, and they blamed Marumi Nakayoshi. And they place, place him under house arrest for a while, and his reputation made it very unlikely for him to continue being a military commander like he was. So he mainly started focusing on swordsmanship only, and uh, when his uh, master died, he uh, went on to found his own school, the Taishiryu school. And this swordsmanship school is uh, what taught Tachibana Minishige, the guy we fought at the end of last stream. And that's his story. Let's do another tutorial, Way of the Omeo. You honor me with your presence, by the way, Sir Anjin. Have you any interest in the power of Omeo? Adding it to your existing strengths would surely make you the strongest, sharpest demon slayer of all. I am but a student of the arts myself. If you wish, I'll teach you what I know. An Omni Mage uses a flow of key energy for, from the interplay of the dark and light to alter themselves, others, and the very nature of our world. It will truly be of use to you. It probably will be. And that's what I'm doing in the tutorial. We learn a skill, fire shot, and then we rest here, equip it. I like how it says zero ninjutsu down the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not feeling really... I'm not feeling my usual, I should say. And we can set a shortcut. So difficult. Now we can spend some points and uh, jump on to the next mission. Marvelous demonstration, just as I suspected. You have a natural gift for the techniques. It wants you only to cultivate it. Let us meet again when the time is right. And we can learn stuff now. Nice seal, new pipe stop. I'm looking to. Stop. Shut around. If you mind your car realm. This would be nice. This would be nice too.
I could have gone for that one actually. Oh, we have some locks. Ah, we don't have enough for it. Whatever. Let's learn some skills for the... We have six for ninjutsu. I don't really feel like uh, learning anything in particular. More elixir is always nice. Foot sweep. Thank you. That's the one I. Yeah. Flux too. Good. Let's revise our gear quickly. I think I'm gonna stick to this. Part of me was thinking maybe I should uh, play around with the Tomfo. Increase my weight a bit too much. I like my agility at the moment. We have unlimited ninjutsu for. Shuriken and Kunai damage, that is nice. I'm gonna go with that. I probably should do all this housekeeping off stream, but just showing it to you. Increase my. We can just go dexterity some more. Alternatively, we can raise body. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That's ready my jutsu. And. We have quick. We can equip quick change now. So what I'm gonna do is go into the options. I haven't really done anything for 30 minutes. That's not really great. Was it in the settings?
Why did I... Uh... It's possible to get more than two sets in this, isn't it? Was it in the settings for this? Or was that only in Neo 2? Okay, it's basic game settings probably. No, it's not here. Wait, how do you enable the other slots? I completely forgot that about Neo one. Was it? I think it might have been a, the blacksmith. <laughs> Item shortcut limit. Yes, that's the one. In Neo Two, it's there from the beginning. That's what confused me. Yeah, I really should wrap myself a bit more for these streams. I'm gonna go with I'll enable quick change. I'm gonna enable uh... Storm Kunai. Alright. Can I? The elixir is on every slot. And I'm going to equip quick change to this one. There we go. I think we're ready. This is a request from Gintrio. I'm not going to do it at the moment. Doesn't matter. So let's press on. William, Kanbei Dono ga senin o tehai shite kudasatta. Washi wa Osaka ni oraleru Ieyasu sama e Ishida gata no ngoki o tsutai ni maeru. Sasuku, Mori e mukau Nagamasa Dono to tomori Rinfu de go de Osaka ni mukau koto ni itasu.
のあやかし噂に聞く海坊主いかにお主とて歯が立つまいニーフデ号もひどいありさまじゃひとまず秋によるとしよう長政殿は親族にあたる平岡頼勝殿の調略に出向くとのこと船が修理されるまで身動きは取れぬし毛利の調略を手伝ってくれ Lady. Arega Ishida no Kashin Hito, Shima Sakondo. Take any was stuck in my idea. Shikashi Sakondo no demo, Mori no Choriakua Muzukashikaro. Hanzo wanted、uh, William to say Sarkon, so he just he could say Sarkon these snaps. But William didn't notice it. And yeah, we'll cover Shima Sarkon later. New map Silver Mine Riders. How good of you to come. I'm Kikawa Hiroi, Lord of Izumo Province. Unfortunately, the head of the Mori clan could not be here, but I shall hear what you have to say in his place. Iwami Ginzan is the largest silver mine in all of Japan. Its high quality silver has fetched top prices and profits both inside and outside Japan's borders. However, its riches have also made it a prime target for other warlords, and the location of its entrance, exit, and inner chambers are kept a close secret. Over time, the Mori clan has accelerated their efforts and dug even deeper into the mountain's depth. Wami Ginzan Silver Mine, May 1600, Wami Province. Alright. This is another real location, but obviously it doesn't look the same way now. Now, the Iwami Ginzan Mines.、Um, this was the largest silver mine associated in Japanese history. It was quite a big deal, actually, and it was discovered in 1526, closed in 1923, so it was open for about four centuries, minus a few years, three years to be exact.、Uh, Now, the merchant who discovered it, Kamiya Jutei, introduced a Korean method to silver mining. Now, this method relies on appellation where you treat ore or alloy under very high temperatures to separate noble metals like gold and silver from base metals like the copper and zinc. So, basically, they got silver, which had a lot of copper impurities, and smelted it. With lead, and when it is cooled, the silver would bind with the lead. Reheating it will melt the lead and allow you to take on take any of the silver bonded with it, and that resulted in high purity silver. And that's why it was popular. The device seems to be responsible for air circulation. Hmm, why would we need earth circulation here? They're trying to beat me with this guy so I can fall down. 
I wasn't born yesterday. I was only born three days ago. I just needed one hit. Okay, so this, this area there's one main strategy. Use a big black Glock to shoot the big black rock. Saves me time from going down there. And yes, that was a tongue twister. Say big black lock, big black rock. Hi ho, hi ho. Off to work we go. Really? Just went back to his. Previous work. All right. This is temporary, obviously. So, uh, as I mentioned in probably the first stream, silver was kind of a big deal in Japan. And this mine provided an alternative to Spanish uh, mer uh, merchants to obtain that silver. And this was also a boon to the daimyo of the area. And um, it allowed them to tra trade with Europeans because this mine was producing about a third of the world's silver, which is about 38 tons. And they called it Soma silver, which was so much silver. Sorry, I'll see myself out. I'm trying to see if the stream is stuttering because of my settings. It might be a bit too much for my laptop. I oh, know that one is just a corpse. Let me look. I think it's okay sometimes. Maybe the particle effects or whatever. So this mine, despite closing in 1923, was actually declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2007 because of its impact in history. And you can actually visit the area today and uh, there are plenty of shrines and temples nearby. Although, although the area is mostly covered in forests. Damn, that, that guy just... immediately countered.
All right, so enough talking about the area. Let's talk about the quest giver who didn't really say much. He just said, oh, I'm going to talk with you. And suddenly we're thrown into a mission, which always felt really bizarre to me in terms of mission design, but whatever. So the quest giver is called, I know we are getting frame drops, a lot of frame drops. Is it frame drops or stuttering? Let me check with somebody. Stream preview instead of just the Twitch page. This color for bombs. Get rid of him. What did we say? I could have just broken this and... I mean, activated this and went to break the rocks. Alright, so the quest giver is a man by the name of Kikawa Hiroi. Who is this guy? And he was the representative of the Mori clan, despite not having the name Mori. What about that? Now, the Mori clan is kind of an Ikki family, which uh, is a kind of a family that comes up uh, through society due to grassroots uh, movement amongst minor landowners. So think of it as kind of a revolt against the traditional samurai rule in the 15th and 16th century. Now I say 15th and 16th century even though the Mori clan is kind of as old as the 13th century, but whatever. Um, so the Mori clan came to be one of the most prominent clans in the 16th century, which is um, kind of where this game was set, 1600. And their most famous leader was a man by the name of uh, Mori Motonari was this guy and he managed to expand their control of all of the Shigoku region this region and he came up from a local samurai a lower kind of uh, samurai lord this um, he was originally kind of sandwiched between the sick sandwiched between the Amago clan of Izumo and the Uchi clan of Suo. And he was kind of a vessel for the Uchi clan at some point, but uh, it's a longer story. Which we're gonna get to eventually. And he overcame both to get to his position, and he was kind of instrumental in crushing the Otomo clan of Bungo. The same Otomo clan I spoke about in the very first stream, the ones, uh, the one where. A guy almost blew his uh, finger off that clan. Oh, really? Yeah, whatever. I'm kind of rusty. 
The main reason why I'm telling you about uh, this founder or the big leader of the Mori clan is because he's going to come up a few times today. There's kind of a famous tale about him and you've probably heard it uh, many times because it's mentioned with a lot of uh, famous figures. And basically, he had three sons. Let's not talk about his sons from his concubines because that's uh, not in the history books. And the sons were brought to him one day and he gave them he gave each of them an arrow and told them to snap it of course they could snap it easily and then he brought three arrows and put them together and told them to snap it obviously they couldn't anymore and the lesson was one arrow can be broken easily but they would not be broken if they stayed together and you've probably heard many variations of this now his sons were mori akamoto this guy, Mori Takamoto would, uh, and then its second one is Kikawa Motoharu because he was adopted by the Kikawa clan, and the third one is Obayakawa Takakage, which uh, we mentioned last stream, the one who was kind of uh, responsible for fixing the Desifer Shrine. Now the eldest, Takamoto, would carry the family name, as was tradition, and he would go on to have a great potential as Daimyo before suddenly dying uh, of poison. Wait a minute, we're in a poison area, aren't we? in 1563 and uh, so that's about 37 years before this game and he really died at the age of 41 and he died while his father was still alive which um, is kind of normal for father to retire and uh, let his son control the clan it was an unusual thing so he shouldn't be treated as such Nakamoto's son who was Terumoto, this guy, would go on to become Daimyo after his father, but really the grandfather was the real power until he died in 1571. Now we mentioned those, the grandson and the grandfather in last stream because they were members of the Council of Fife. were responsible for supporting Hideyoshi and supporting his son. This goes back to the entrance. The second son, Motoharu, this one, would get adopted by the Kikawa clan. That's why his name is Kikawa Motoharu. And uh, much later, he becomes one of uh, Hideyoshi's generals, especially in the Kyushu campaign. And he happens to be the father of our mission giver, Ikawa Hiroi. This one. The third son, on the other hand, Takakage, would get adopted by the Kobayakawa clan, which is why it's called Kobayakawa Takakage. And uh, yeah, I mentioned how uh, he was given Tachibana Castle last stream. And he also joined his brother under Hideyoshi. And uh, the whole thing about the two Mori rivers uh, that I spoke to about last time. See, there is a connection between the streams. They're not disjointed, I think.
these guys, as soon as you blind them, you break them. My knees did not break. Now before Motonari's death, the grandfather, um, he gave instructions to the clan and told them they should be worrying more about fortifying themselves instead of overextending themselves. So quality over quantity. And that became kind of the strategy of the Mori clan as it went on. This view along with uh, hatred for Nobunaga would continue under the grandson of uh, Teramoto. This one, Teramoto. So yeah, this uh, major clan was always a thorn at uh, Nobunaga's side, which goes without saying. And um, I mentioned last stream how uh, Nobunaga had Hideyoshi fight them and uh, during the whole struggle Nobunaga died and Hideyoshi hid it, that fact and uh, brokered for peace and we went into detail about that. So the real question is how would a clan that was in opposition to Nobunaga, suddenly join forces with Hideyoshi, eventually. And I covered that in detail. I'm repeating myself now, because I am tired. But, um... The whole struggle with Nobunaga kind of uh, was a result of uh, something I touched upon very briefly in an earlier stream. And it's related to the uh, concept of uh, Ikko Ikki, which is uh, basically translated as uh, kind of the single-minded league. And the Ikki, which I mentioned before, which was a revolt against the traditional samurai rule. These leagues were becoming more and more common during the Sengoku Jidai. And sometimes they even teamed up with Jizamurai, um, lower level samurai lords. And they were toppling uh, stronger daimyo. Drop and roll, always. Shortcut. I don't know why this shortcut exists, to be honest. It's not really that far from the entrance. Now, the Iku Iki was kind of a um, almost religious uh, league, unified under the uh, Jodo Shinshu sect of Buddhism. And the spiritual leader of that uh, movement was a Buddhist priest by the name of uh, Renryo. Who is this guy right here? Now he took charge of the Jodo Shinshu sect and during the Onin War, which I mentioned uh, last uh, stream, and that the one that kicked off the whole Sengoku Jirai. He united different factions under the banner of Ishiyama Honganji. Now, if you recall, the Honganji was an incident that I mentioned briefly last uh, stream, that um, where Nobunaga was fighting against the um, temple. And that will also come in play more in Neo 2, so I'm trying not to cover it too much. 
Now, despite Renyu being an avowed pacifist until his death, and only advocating for force in self-defense, the temples became openly militant in nature. And these so-called defensive rebellions uh, sprung up all over Japan. They were even um, successful in toppling some of the shogun's uh, governors. And by the time of Nobunaga, the Ishiyama Honganji was a strong entity that had to be dealt with as equal to other daimyo, so it wasn't something to be underestimated. I need to remember the Kodama. I didn't get all of them in the previous mission. Focusing on this, focusing on the gameplay, focusing on my notes, and making myself coherent while looking at chat, that is really tiring. Which is why these streams always drain me. Anyway, uh, by the time of Nobunaga, which is well after the Onin War, so the head of the temple was uh, different, Nobunaga was alienating the Lord Abbot of the here. Uh, Ishiyama Honkanji. Now, this abbot was a man by the name of Kenyo Osa. This one. And he was, uh, he, as in Nobunaga, was imposing taxes on the temple, even though previously they were tax exempt. And you know how much people love taxes. the key over there and the reason that uh, Nobunaga was uh, imposing taxes on them was because the Ikuiki were pretty much uh, semi-autonomous encla enclaves of uh, temples and uh, they, that affected the Damia's tax revenue as uh, farmers became enthralled to the temple and would give them everything. And uh, the Honganji obviously viewed the taxes as extortion. And they didn't look favorably upon Nobunaga. Now this uh, antagonism between the Honganji and Nobunaga was great for one group of people and that was Nobunaga's uh, enemies. Is the stream stuttering again? And when I say enemies, I mainly mean, uh, mean the Asai, Asakura and most importantly here, the Mori clan. I hate these things. I hate, 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 hate these things. Did I mention I hate them?
I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Help me step wheel, I'm stuck. And yeah, this Kadamo was in the poison. Sir. I like high stance too much with this and I need to change that approach. What's that skittering around? Clear. Can we speak now? I think we can speak. So yeah, the uh, Asai, Asakura, and Mori clans were Nobunaga's enemies, and uh, the Ishiyama Honganji had kind of an alarm system in place where they can hold the bell, and that means, hey, come uh, help us. There is trouble here, and that was used to call reinforcements. And then Bell was kind of the pretext for the real war between Nobunaga and the Temple. Because at one point, uh, 15, in 1570, In 1570, Nobunaga was fighting a coalition of his enemies nearby. And suddenly the temple sounded the bell, and uh, Nobunaga found himself being attacked uh, from all over the place. And he got injured at that point, and that allowed him to have an, a reason to attack the temple. So he gathered about 30,000 men in August of uh, 1570, and surrounded the Ishiyama Honganji, and laid to siege. Funny thing is, the year is not mentioned there, I just recalled it. It's not in my notes, I should write it in my notes. I wrote in my notes 70, which doesn't really make sense. It would be 1570, as I am in this century. But uh, despite having 30,000 people, the Iku Iki still managed to hold out against Nobunaga because they uh, kept doing surprise midnight attacks and that kept forcing him back. And that was kind of a humiliating defeat for Nobunaga and he had to withdraw after lifting the siege and he withdrew to Kyoto. At that point, his forces were doing a little more than monitoring the situation. And that siege continued for 11 years, which I think makes it the longest siege in Japanese history. And we should have two levels. Can 
we squeeze 10,000 spirit stones. Yeah, we can squeeze 10,000. Nice 10 on ma in magic. And we can learn some magic. Let's increase our capacity, first and foremost. I can do... I don't remember ever using Kekai back in the day. Now let's do Life Seal. Because we're gonna need that for Sloth. And let's put... Uh, We're good for now. We can equip it. Go for the antitoxin pill. But now we're good. Rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah, if you get it right and just go around them. Right, let's shoot that. Yeah, I hate going down into the poison, in case you haven't realized. That completely clears the poison. Now we don't have to worry about it, even if we die. That's nice, isn't it? you're enjoying your meal buddy. This 
the last meal. Alright, so we got to the point where Nobunaga pretty much just withdrew and left his forces to monitor. But by 1576, with the siege still ongoing, the Ishiyama Honganji evolved into a complex fortress with 51 separate outposts, so it wasn't really a small time anymore. And the reason they managed to last this long was because of our friends, the Mori clan, who acted as kind of an important lifeline in the outside world. And they did that by, well, it's kind of uh, convenient, but the Honganji was, oh, damn it, how did that hurt me? It was kind of situated near the eastern shores, and the Moris were very, very capable mariners. And could easily provide them with supplies uh, by sea. And Nobunaga's attempt to disrupt their sea power in 1575 was uh, a huge failure. But in 1578, the Nobunaga managed to actually successfully break Mori naval supply line. And he did that using seven massive ships that were clad in steel armor, waiting and carrying heavy cannons. So the, he pretty much went in with floating fortress. that floating fortress, well, floating fortresses, plural, managed to crush the Mori supply line. But that wasn't really the end of the conflict, because uh, the siege was still ongoing. At that point, the Emperor, who still exists in all these uh, messed up times, he brokered peace between Nobunaga and the temple. Nobunaga, obviously, at that point, he was kind of tired of the whole thing. And the Lord Abbot, uh, Enyo, this one, um, agreed. But the Emperor had a condition, and that was uh, related to another group that was involved in this war, who are the Mori. He said uh, one condition is that the Mori had to not be party to this uh, ceasefire. Nobunaga's terms were surprisingly generous for Nobunaga. He um, was willing to pardon all the Honganji fighters. Nobunaga being generous and reasonable, that's unheard of, I know, right? Alright, we got some mage locks. There is more stuff over there that we can get. 
and Nobunaga signed the agreement in his own blood. At that point also the abbot was willing because the Mori were not really going to be provide him, providing him with uh, any supplies anymore because of what happened. Nobunaga breaking through. Um, he uh, kind of agreed but led out of the fortress with his followers in 1580 and signed the agreement. He eventually goes on to serve uh, Hideyoshi actually. However, that wasn't really the end of the line for the conflict because the abbot's son, a man by the name of Konyo, and there isn't really an image of him that I can show, um, he thought his father was a traitor, a coward who was willing to submit to Nobunaga. So his father just wanted it to end and said, all right, I acknowledge my son as uh, the leader. And that was an attempt to get him to leave the temple. Somehow it actually worked. Nobunaga was allegedly was interested in getting a tour of the temple after he, you know, laid it to siege for 11 years. But that didn't really happen because somehow after the new Lord Abbot and his followers left the temple suddenly the per temple was burned down now whether they burned it because they didn't want nobunaga to to have access to it or did they did nobunaga burn it out of uh, it's not really clear all we need to know is it burned and the reason there isn't really an, any image of the temple is not only because it burned but also because right there at that very spot is where Osaka castle was, was built and it, if it wasn't for that temple Osaka wouldn't really exist as a city because it became a central area the surrounding people as a temple and also a castle that takes its place also became a center of a new city funny how things work just keep on rolling 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 the thing is meant to freak you the fuck out I already know about this. Also, I didn't actually fall to the to these holes. What's up with the coppers today? I don't remember these coppers being everywhere. Do you? desperate here so I remember this being oh no that was unnecessary the whole big change
And we didn't find every Kodama, did we? Yeah, I don't know why I'm suddenly very terrible at finding Kodama. I know where the other Kodama is, for sure. But I don't really remember how to get there. I know it's up there and... Oh, I do remember now. I remember now. I remember. Alright, we just need 300 more. Let's pop the thing. And... I'll go with body. Never go with the wrong with more health. All right, so while the peace um, negotiations were continuing in 1582. Um, Hideyoshi was engaged with the Mori in Shogoku region and Nobunaga was ass assassinated and I did mention the whole story about how he intercepted the messages to um, try and trick the Mori into having a proper peace treaty with him And at that time, uh, Hideyoshi agreed uh, with, about peace as long as the Mori ceded uh, control and acknowledged supremacy, or the supremacy in the Hoki, Mimasaka uh, and Bichu region. Two of them were already reduced uh, to almost nothing by Hideyoshi, and the third was almost surrendering, so the Mori were inclined to agree anyway. And I mentioned how they decided to go on with the peace anyway, even when they found out Nobunaga was uh, dead. And this relationship between Mori and Hideyoshi strengthened over time. And uh, Yomoto was named in the Council of Five, as I mentioned uh, last stream, as one of the five advisors to Hideyoshi's heir, Diori, until they came of age. And um, the issue was uh, Terumoto was viewed as uh, weak and uh, like to leave the fighting to others. It wasn't uncommon for him to get a lot of support and advice from close families like the Kikawa or Kwayakawa, as I mentioned, it was the people who were heads of these families were related to them. It's why this mission uh, was handed by Kikawa Hiroi this one, the man who became head of the Kikawa clan following uh, his father's and brother's death. He wasn't known as a fighter, but was a good strategist and diplomat. And uh, Hideyoshi even held him in very high esteem and was kind of the man responsible for holding the Mori together after Akage's death by Akawa Takagage. So he was kind of important, but behind the scenes, if you want to say. And we're ready for a boss, are we? Excuse me, sir. I have no quarrel with you. I really want to go in peace and fight a boss. <laughs>
kind of uh, silly. poisoned oh, damn it I'm out of uh, elixirs let's put the Antidote in the quick change slot. I can use a quick change before. My uh, guardian spirit, I wasted it. It could have been far better utilized. sneak in. It's really not a tough boss. Okay. Oh, my quick change also wore off before I could make use of it. even I was pressing the healing button what was I even locked on to there was nothing I'm lo to lock on to I lost my uh, well there wasn't any I'm rated ready to lose was there I was mentioning the heal button, but no heal was going through. I don't know how I'm dying to these easy bosses. Even in my last history stream, I just one shot it. down with me.
episode. Yeah, that thing turned off as soon as I went down again. Oh well. Messy. Very messy. So messy it could play for Argentina. Oh ha oh, ha. Oh. Yeah, they give me antidotes. No, I can't jump from here because they want to stop you from dying after beating the boss. There isn't a way to kill yourself. You can't even fall off. Poison doesn't damage you anymore. That kind of thing. Okay, let's go forward. That went quickly enough. The whole mission, I mean. Thank you for taking care of that business in Iwami. Now we should be able to resume our mining. I would much appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone what you saw down there. Keep it to yourself, and I can assure you that the Mori clan will be glad to honor Master Hanzo's request for as long as it remains advantageous for us to do so. If you wish to further, for further assistance from the Mori clan, I suggest you go see Kobayakawa Hideaki. This isn't really made clear in the game, but um, our good friend here, the smart diplomat, was convinced uh, Ishida Mitsunari would not defeat Tokugawa Ieyasu. Uh, so he basically decided to secretly ally himself with Ieyasu without consulting the allies, on the condition that uh, Mori would get to keep their five provinces. So he was kind of clever. Save before anything, and then look at Amrita memories. Yokai, the Great Centipede, Umukade, literally a hundred legs. In Japanese, this yokai takes the form of giant centipedes. Normal centipedes are commonly encountered in forests and mountains throughout Japan, and even at their small size, pack enough poison in their bites to cause swelling or even paralysis. A giant yokai centipede, however, has fangs powerful enough to crush bones, and if you guard it, it basically cancels that attack. Uh, the omokade is said to be an aggressive centipede with uh, dragon-like features. Uh, they are said to be very venomous, and their exoskeletons cannot be pierced by normal weapons. But human saliva is toxic to them, which is weird. There is a legend where a man by the name of Fujiwara Hidesato, Fujiwara being the huge clan back in the 8th century or so, um, he was a 10th century bureaucrat and he confronted a dragon serpent which was on Seta Bridge in the Omi province, undeterred by its length of uh, 200 feet. He stepped on his back and crossed the bridge. A woman visited him at night claiming to be the female form of that serpent and told him of a giant centipede near Lake Biwa who was uh, devouring man and beast. He decided to went on to face the centipede and the first two arrows he fired were ineffective but when he applied some spit on the third arrow, it was fatal. 
And that is kind of weird because why would he apply spit to some arrow? I wouldn't go like, hey, my two arrows didn't work. Let me spit on them. But yeah, this is uh, the depiction in Legend, and it's huge, as you can see. In this one, they went with a slightly different one where you can see it's a weird skull, and uh, it's made of different rocks. Well, cool. There is another new one, Wheel Monk. A yokai like a wheel with a gigantic face attached to it. The wheel is big enough to be used on an ox cart. And while the face has a certain degree of freedom to leap from it, they remain tied to it by their hair. Wreathed in flames and scowling hideously as they roll around, the face resembles a visitor from another world, and has long struck terror to the hearts of those who witness them. There's like two faces. And here is this depiction in Oaklobe. I wrote my notes on it. Where was it? Where did I put my notes? Let me find them a little bit. Yeah, and there is a... I can't find my notes for some reason. Um, there is a tale about it where one woman was looking out the window she saw this wheel monk moving around and uh, the wheel monk realized she was watching him and he turned around and uh, said instead of looking at me why don't you look pay attention to your baby and then she turned around from the window and looked at her baby and she found the baby's arms and legs cut off he looked back to the wheel monk one you do and uh, she noticed the baby's arms and legs uh, hanging from its mouth. Cool story. If you notice, they don't even have the Mori clan guys in the character directory. It's really silly. Let's do some housekeeping, quickly. Visualty damage bonus, ninjutsu damage bonus. I'm gonna go with a ninjutsu actually, even though... We would benefit... Visualty. A helm used by Mori Motonari, a formidable officer who rose from head of Aki province to daimyo of the entire Chugoku region. Remember Mori Motonari, the one I mentioned? It has bulges to the front and rear, and two plow shaped extension flank, a central Buddhist sanko and sword symbol to comprise the front crest, the ornate on on metalwork on the neck plate, and elsewhere is befitting of a giant great daimyo such as Motonari. See that? That's Motonari's helmet. Uh, this one doesn't have the picture. The one, the picture I have uh, doesn't have the helmet on it. But uh, yeah, it's this guy. I can go with ninjutsu power. Yeah, let's go with that. Jitsu stuff, cool. We 
gonna swap this with quick change scroll. We don't need the antidotes anymore. And let's save quickly before we take a quick break. I know it's less than two hours, but uh, yeah, let's take that break. We'll jump on to the next mission and um, that will be it for today. Let's uh, double check. Uh, we have we need six thousand. Well, more like five thousand three hundred. We have the items for it. Twenty thousand with the soul stone. Nah. Pass. All right. Break time. It is. We'll be back in a few minutes. Right, I'm back.
let's check with the blacksmith first if there is anything we can purchase we want to purchase probably not we have quite a lot of ammunition Well, this next mission, um, oh, hold on, blacksmith. We want another point for the short, but Japanese sword field. Have you gotten used to them? Yes. Hmm, nothing yet. What if we... Oh, we don't have the materials for anything. How about we spend some money? another shortcut slot. Basically, we need to spend money with her and you unlock patronage points, which I haven't unlocked yet. Um, let's buy more. That's my only choice, really. Get 50 of the thing. Nope, still nothing. Let's buy a book of reincarnation. There we go. That's a point. And if we go to a shrine, actually we have we have all new points, right? Getting the fire talisman and fire shot. Why you ask? You'll know soon why. It's mainly for this mission, really. I can raise my resistance to water, I guess, if I wanted to. Find ready jutsu. I'm giving myself fire. Fire. Well, I don't have more slots. Sucks to be me. And fire shot. I'm also gonna put the elixir down here. We'll eventually get more points. Actually, instead of poison, let's put Kakodama. How many uh, Kodamas am I missing here? Three Kodamas. I was really not paying attention to the Kodama while speaking. I should uh, try and fix that habit of mine. Mayakawa Hideaki, the a name that Mori just mentioned here. It's rumors of the ghost haunting in Tsukushima. The crew is scared stiff. We Kubaikawa may have may be masters of the sea, but our expertise doesn't extend to the supernatural. If you were to drive away this fearsome spirit, Sir Anjin, I would be happy to arrange a meeting with the Murakami. They should be able to repair your foreign vessel. I may even consider helping out Lord Iyasu for your trouble. So you're probably thinking, hey, I know, this is a Kubayakawa, 
he's definitely descended from Mori Motonari, who I was talking about the whole previous mission. And it's good you're paying attention because you're absolutely crunk. This man was born to Inoshita Isada, who was Hideyoshi's brother-in-law. And he was mentored by our good old friend Kanbei, who I mentioned last stream. And then he would, it was adapted by Kobayakawa Takagake, this man right here, who was originally a Mori, like I mentioned earlier. Everybody links up. He was he was named Supreme Commander of Hideyoshi's uh, second Korean campaign, and during the siege of uh, Ulsan, it is said he led the Japanese reinforcements and fought on the front lines. Hideyoshi wasn't happy for his Supreme Commander to risk his life like some common Ashigaru. So when he returned, he was deprived of his uh, faith and uh, in Kyushu and banished uh, to a small town. Apparently, Hideyoshi wanted to execute him, but was calmed down by Tokugawa Ieyasu. And then Ieyasu went on to tell Hideaki that uh, it was Ishida Mitsunari who put the idea of execution into Hideyoshi's head. Now, whether that is true or not, I mean, he also might have been trying to get people against uh, Mitsunari, which I mentioned last stream, they weren't on good terms to begin with. It's, um, it could have happened though, because Mitsunari was the inspector of Hideyoshi's forces in the Korean campaign. And, uh, it was uh, this guy, Bayakawa Hideaki, was also rumored to attack uh, women and children during the campaigns. But he wasn't exactly popular to begin with. He also mentions the Murakami, uh, who were a strong ally of the Mori in countless situations and were sometimes known as pirates because they dominated the inland sea. Isukushima, located in the Aki domain, is a shrine built in the 12th century atop a basin of holy water, now contaminated by yokai energy to the point of ruination. Previous head of the Kobayakawa family, Takakage, great pains reconstruct and protect the shrines of the west, but Hideaki has proven himself not up to the task, and the area has now been infested by yokai and pirates. May 1600, Tsukushima Island, Aki Province. Pretty much telling you here, hey, fire will be good. I need to get some fire. Oh, hello, Fuku. Hips don't lie. And a flint, flint stone, yes, and a fire amulet. Many people hate this mission. I can't really blame them. skills on 
Oh, no, I don't. This one. And then foot sweep. All right, so this is Tsukima, Tsukima Shrine, which is a Shinto shrine. It's said to have been founded in 593 by Saike Kuramoto, who was an influential person at the time. And it's said that in the early 9th century, a Buddhist priest who just returned from China visited the island, Tsushima Island, and he said he felt spirits around the place. And he said this place must be a holy site. But if you notice the uh, the shrine, uh, the the loading screen mentioned uh, a very different century, uh, 12th century. That's because this um, shrine is strongly linked with a man by the name of uh, Tara no Kiyomori, who is this guy right here. Now. Uh, he was a very important figure in Japanese history as he was responsible for the very first samurai controlled government in Japanese history. Well, obviously, first one. The. Uh, he makes an appearance in Neo 2, in a way, so I will try not to talk too much about him. But. Um, He basically got to power by manipulating rivalry between the emperor at the time who was and uh, his father who had retired from his emperor role. But as I said, I'm not going to go into detail too much about that. But with regards to this island or this shrine, it's uh, said that uh, Kiyomori, I don't know Kiyomori, again, this man right here, he once had a dream where he was visited by a priest who told him that he would be elevated to the highest ranks if he built a shrine here. Now, there was kind of the foundation of a shrine already, but uh, he said, all right, and he built it, he built it in 1168. Now, whether that story is real or not, it doesn't matter because it wasn't really uncommon for people of nobility to take on some architecture or project to show off their assets. Now, this shrine was built in what they would call the Shinden Zukuri style. And I'm going to explain what that is in a moment. This mission is going to be held because I will be talking while walking around in areas with Funny thing is, that thing fell into the water. It came from the water, it can drown. Now, this is clear bait because there is a guy waiting to ambush me on the side. I'm not gonna fall for that. Right there. Yeah. 
graphics are great. Alright. So as I was saying, this was... I completely forgot about that guy. This was built in the Shinden Zukuri style. And that was mainly used for... Alice's Fnobles and so on. And it came about uh, as a style in the AN period, which is uh, 794 to 1185. And this was a time when Japan wanted to distance itself from Chinese culture. Although this style fell in favor by the time of the Kamakura period, which was in 1185 to 1333, right after the Heian period. And let me see, I have the map right here. This is a map of the shrine. It's I struggled. I spent some time trying to to basically compare the map in the in-game to this. What I can see though is we started from the top right, presumably, and we're currently heading south. It's really difficult because I don't feel like the one in in-game really correlates to what is shown on the map. It's not like um, Lost Dreams one where I could really compare and contrast the two. What I would guess though is what we have here is the right here is the Marudo Shrine which is uh, basically the biggest Sesha in Tsukushima, Sesha being the second in rank in size to the main shrine. And this is just my guess really. It's dedicated to, I believe, five deities, namely the... Oh, what are they again? I, I'm trying to allow memory. I don't actually remember too well. I think there is a Sutra chamber in the back. I went... I went to see it years ago. Let me see. It's, I think it's Aminono... Amino Shihime Mo Mikoto is one of the deities. It's really been ages. Should have probably written that down. I'm working from memory here. There are two uh, titles you can get in this uh, mission. One is related to lighting up all of these, and one li related to not lighting up a single one of them. And the music starts as soon as you light the first one. There's no music before that. It's a cool touch. Anyway, we're talking about Tyrano Kiyomo, this man right here. He put in quite a lot of effort into the shrine, as evidenced by the fact that he used the style of palaces constructed. He also transcribed 33 scrolls of the Lotus Sutra, one Amitabha scroll, one Heart Sutra, And the prayer scroll. 
and he dedicated them to the shrine. All of these uh, things are referred to as uh, the Heike no Kyo, and it's considered uh, one of the national treasures of uh, Japan. Get rid of the armored enemies, always. People hate this mission because you can easily just fall into the water and I'm not gonna go there. That's a trap. <laughs> And being uh, that William is a sailor, he can't swim. Alright, here is an issue. This one right here is a historical figure. But I'm not gonna spawn him yet. Because I have other things to take care of and tell you about first. Got a Kodama. So this shrine grew in importance over time, and um, to the, it got to the extent that pilgrims from imperial families, even the retired emperor, would uh, come visit the shrine. And this continued after the Heian period to the Kamakura period, because even the shoguns uh, in the Kamakura and Muromachi uh, periods would uh, come to visit. People only really started living in on this island in the late Kamakura period. First it was priests and then other people started joining. I should mention though that This um, place is separated from the mainland by about uh, 500 meters. Uh, that's the Onoseto Strait in Hiroshima. And as you probably have guessed, this shrine has been built and rebuilt so many times, fixed and repaired about its history and that's because of uh, natural disasters like uh, typhoons and storms or lightning strikes but it also was affected by human events like the Shibutsu boundary policy in uh, the around the Meiji restoration and that's in far more recent times in 1800s and that was a time when they separated the Shinto for a religion from Buddhism but there was actually a, a more famous example of uh, things that affected the shrine. That example is the thing I'm going to be talking about today. Now, I mentioned in the last mission that uh, Mori started out as uh, vessels for the Ochi clan. 
but what happened to the Ochi clan? Oh, well, time to strap in. Now, the Ochi clan was one of the most powerful clans in Japan at the time. And had six provinces under their control. And this is partially because they could trade with China and the Jesuit uh, missionaries. Their home city was in Yamaguchi, and I mentioned that city in the very first dream because it was the city Francis Xavier was uh, allowed to preach in, and where he started uh, being successful. This is the cheese strategy. You pull them in, and then you sweep their feet. And another reason for the prosperity of the Uchi clan was uh, their daimyo, a man by the name of Uchi Yoshitaka. This man right here. He had a very good relationship with the emperor at the time, who was Emperor Gonara. This one. Totally not based on Buddha. And his relationship with the emperor was so good that he was named acting governor of Yamashiro in 1588. In, no, sorry, 1551. This man. And Yamashiro was the pro uh, province where the capital was located, so it was a big deal. One reason for the close relationship was that uh, y uh, Yoshitaka helped fund the emperor's coronation. I mentioned in the first dream that usually the emperor's uh, they did not have much money and always struggled with the uh, financials and couldn't even hold coronations or funerals. Is he dead? Did he die? I don't know. So that's why he needed funding from our friend. Another reason why he was given the position of protector of the capital was uh, because he was worried about other warlords, like uh, people by the name of uh, Miyoshi Nagayoshi, who was uh, would eventually uh, manage to defeat the Shogun four years from the story. That is completely relevant and it's just a fun little fact. I'm getting my ass handed to me by a skeleton. That's bad. This right here is a, another shrine. But anyway, Yoshitaka decided to relocate the emperor as well as the court to his home city of Yamaguchi in 1551. And needless to say, this would have brought uh, great prosperity to Yamaguchi because it would be the imperial capital. And within one month, all the, of the court was moved to Yamaguchi. And the only things left were the emperor and uh, some of his close attendants. The reason why I was saying it's a trap because as soon as you come down here to open the chest, this guy jumps down and surprises you. So yeah, 
Yoshitaka moved the Imperial Capital or was in the process of moving the Imperial Capital. And obviously not everyone was happy with the situation. There was namely one person. Well, no. There were many people who weren't happy. They were his enemies. The old Chi enemies. But there were also his own military leaders. His own people. They weren't happy because, uh, well, military leaders want money. They want all the money to go to the military. It's totally not well, like uh, the current times. And they felt that now they were playing second fiddle to the courtiers. And also, um, the main man who was uh, leading the uh, complaint was uh, someone by the name of Sue Takafusa. Now, I couldn't actually find any illustration of him, but here is his grave. Plot twist, he dies. Bigger plot twist, everyone I'm talking about dies. Now, Takafusa was a Shugudai of uh, the Uchi clan. It was kind of like their lesser, in a way. He also had the view that uh, Yoshitaka was becoming weak because he just focused on art and entertainment instead of focusing on things like warfare. And he felt that uh, he was being influenced by his uh, calligrapher Sagara Takito wanted a soft approach to leading. I should also mention that this guy who was not happy, Takafusa, was actually Yoshitaka's uh, childhood friend. So beware of your childhood friends. So with all the anger blowing, boiling in the background, someone had to take notice. And the one who did notice was um, another Shugudai, Suge Shigenori. And he went to, to Yoshitaka to warn him. Hey, your childhood friend, Takafusa, he's about to betray you. Uh, Yoshitaka did not want to suspect his childhood friend. And uh, he dismissed the warnings. So Suge Shigenori, the man who warned the Uchi, and fuck this, I'm actually going against Uchi now. He's incompetent, doesn't even listen to my warnings. One reason why uh, Yoshitaka was not really feeling threatened was um, actually very simple. He had the backing of the Mori, and he did not feel threatened because of that. Little did he know though, that uh, Mori Motonari, the very same man who we were talking about earlier in the previous mission, he kind of gave his approval for the coup. Since he himself wanted to rise up. And Takafusa managed to convince the Ochi's former enemies, the Otomo, again, the that family we mentioned in the Bungo province and he convinced them to help him out so he was getting his his as in Yoshitaka's allies and enemies on his side he was doing well and on the 28th of September of that year Akafusa decided to give me a very very early birthday present because I wasn't even born and he assembled his forces as I say Yoshitaka was thinking his other Shogudai would help him out so he didn't really feel too threatened 
and he suddenly found himself with little to no defense. And he fled the city and burned it on his way out. But well, anyway, it, it was burned on the way out. It's not really clear if he burned it or the others burned it. Although most likely the others burned it actually because they weren't happy with it being an imperial city in the first place. He attempted to form a temple stronghold with about 2,000 of his men, Wosenji. But many of his men defected by that point or deserted him, and he was surrounded the very next day. So they decided to negotiate on the condition that Yoshitaka would retire in favor of his heir. So Shitaka and his uh, close entourage left the temple, went north, attempting to escape by boat. Even the weather was not on their side because the winds pushed them back to shore. So Yoshitaka was left with nothing but to sit down and compose a poem, a poem that would be his death poem. an idiot today. So yeah, he composed his death poem and it was Harakiri time. And this whole incident came to be known as the Tani G incident. Now Soe Takafusa, the guy who revolted, uh, went on to change his name to Sue Harukata. And this is because he replaced Yoshitaka with Uchi Yoshinaka. A bit weird to explain, but um, Yoshinaga was originally Otomo Haruhide, half brother of the Otomo Sorin, the guy who almost blew his thumb off in the very first stream. So the name Takafusa was under Yoshitaka and Harukata was under Haruhide. See? The connection? Anyway, giving Yoshinaga power was uh, really a reward for having Otomo help with the coup. Originally he was uh, adopted by the Uchi family, but uh, Yoshitaka's son, Yoshihiro, was born. The whole thing was uh, called off. But uh, yeah, that, that was a whole connection. And it was saying that the city of Yamaguchi was burned with looting and violence running rampant. For several days after the coup. And most of this was from eyewitness accounts from uh, Christian missionaries who were present in Yamaguchi. As I mentioned before, it was a, a kind of a stronghold for them. The city was burned twice more within 18 years, which kind of left it as a shadow of its former self. And it kind of didn't recover from that one. Yeah, that's the way to handle it. I was being an idiot.
working my way back towards the revenant that I left. Isn't anyone here, right? All right, let's get the revenant, or I could. Get that guy first. All right, so the name of Mura Fusakio. And we're gonna fight him in a better position. Sir. Don't worry about Mori's men. Lord Harakata, get away. But I was just talking about how the Mori were helping Harakata. How did this happen? Well, that's the second part of the story now. While Ochi Yoshinaga, who, as I mentioned, was originally Otomo Uhide, was the leader, um, Suwei Harukata, or Takafusa previously, was really the one pulling the strings. His co conspirators, namely the other Shogudai, planned on putting Yoshitaka's actual son, Yoshihiro, in power. But now Yoshitaka and Yoshihiro were dead after that whole incident. So they needed somebody to answer for that crime. So Harukata needed a scapegoat. A scapegoat would be Sugi Shigenori, the man who warned Yoshitaka initially of the whole plot, and Yoshitaka didn't believe him. And then he went, screw this, I'm going with a coup. Yeah, he was the one who was made the scapegoat, and he was sentenced to death. And everyone else started worrying that Harukata was getting rid of all the people who can hamper his rise to power. And most former Shogudais started to retire. So it was weakening the area quite considerably. And let's see what... Alright, that was a correct guess. Meanwhile, Mori Motonari, the guy who was mentioned in previous mission, and it's kind of a big deal. He was working behind the scenes. And in 1554, barely three years after the whole situation, he declared that the Emperor wants him to avenge Yoshitaka's death. He went against Harukata, even though he kind of gave them the approval. Funny how things work, right? And this is partially because he wasn't happy with the way Harukata was managing resources and uh, partially because he really wanted power. Get over 
here. Horikata has defended himself against the Mori with about 30,000 men. Mori and Motonari didn't even have half of that. But he had money, and money could be used to bribe people, uh, which can kind of shift the balance a little bit. And that left them at a stalemate. But Motonari had a decent idea, like a decent plan really. Oh, hello, sir. The plan was to build a castle on Miyajima Island, which is also known as uh, Izukushima, this very island. And he called it Miyao Castle. Not Miyao as in cat, Miyao as in M I Y A O. Barely, he's outside that circle, but he was getting recovered by it. Whatever. Oh, I need to get my stuff. So anyway, he built this so-called castle. I say so-called because it was really basic and it was more of a fort than a castle. And it was built on a hill at the foot of a very steep mountain near Itsukujima Shrine. You can visit that mountain and the shrine these days. It's, uh, I think it's a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site at the moment. The shrine that is. Good thing we didn't lose much progress. Now this uh, so-called castle was uh, surrounded by the sea on three sides and therefore was kind of uh, vulnerable. They didn't really have many places to escape to. It took about a month to set up and well, as soon as he finished building it, he left and went to the mainland. Let's go with that. Right, let's pull up the map again. I think this would put us at the Honden, the main shrine. As I said, the map is a little strange, it's kind of hard to I would say this is the Honden. it does it is the main thing here well 
Oh, sir. Nope, can't do that. Okay, so we got as far as uh, the Miao Castle that was built by Mori Motonari. As I mentioned, he left a small garrison to defend the castle. And you would think, hey, this is weird, why would he do that? Well, it was bait. Because Harukata was an idiot and he took the bait, attacked the castle, won it easily. And Motonari, who was had fewer people, knew the land well. He had Kobayakawa Takakage sail straight past the fortific fortification that Harukata put up, while Motonari and the other sons landed out of sight, then attacked Harukata by surprise from behind and managed to retake the castle. And this was done with the help of the Murakami, the very clan that was mentioned in the beginning of this uh, mission. The estimates were that Harukata's forces were about 20 to 30,000, and Mori was 3 to 10,000. So that victory was mostly due to strategy. Harukata ended up uh, committing seppuku, and Motonari managed to eventually get Ochi Yoshinaga to commit suicide, which made him the strongest lord in Western Japan. And uh, this battle came to be known as uh, Battle of Miyagi, Miyajima, sorry, and uh, there is a, no not this one, um, where is it, yeah, Battle of Miyajima, this one, this is a scroll depicting, depicting the events that were happening. Sue Harukata, the man we were talking about just now, this is his revenant. That's why I stopped here for a while. Okay, I'm sorry. I was telling people how you died. Motonari. And that's the story of him. And these revenants, most people just run past them, and they're more difficult to notice if you um, have it online because then you would just run past the enemies easily. Because there are many revenants, and you'd just be like, yeah, whatever. Already seen them. This one is shot, I believe. Oh, it's not. I'm confusing it with something else. this in this game. doing too well on the
on the elixirs. can easily fall here, and that's their intention. Okay. If we look at the map again, I believe we are at the bridge right here, in the bottom left. Sorry, Bashi. I believe this... Um, if I recall correctly, um, the Soribashi was uh, it only appears in history in basically between 1240 and 1243. So it means the bridge didn't really exist until Ira and Okiomi visited the shrine. It's I said it's also called the Chokushobashi Imperial Messages Bridge. And that Imperial Messages uh, crossed it to enter the main shrine on such important festive occasions. As um, some of the festivals that there were held here. And um, the current bridge was well the current bridge at the time in sixteen hundred was uh, I think it dates back to 1557 which was constructed by Mori Motonari and Mori Takamoto but we can't visit that bridge because it's shattered it's an arch bridge if you can if you visit it in real life now it's quite a big bridge I tried fighting finding a big picture of it but it wasn't easy You can fall easily in this place. And that's why I always hold card while running here. <laughs> So it always maintains a walk instead of a run. <laughs> Big ass skeleton coming. Papa Skelly. And there's a skeleton around the corner here. I'm waiting for Papa to go away. Don't worry little Kadama, I'm gonna save you. Yeah, that guy can't walk. Ah, 
าวเอ็นเลยแล้วไม่ thought I dodged that Destroy the things. Skeleton. It's coming up. Good boy. Come here. Doing on time. I think we're doing. We're going through this pretty quickly, but I am thinking about the. I don't really have much to say more in this mission. My pacing was a little off. Maybe I should have left that room until the end. Okay, this thing. There is a lantern right here. Shoot, I had the map up all along. Yeah, this is me being tired. I almost fell there. Get drops. This takes us to the boss. Obviously, though, I'm not facing the boss.
How many attempts did that take? where you came from. I'm not being racist to the mini omibos or get back there would be yeah this is another reason why people hate this map it's a bit of a maze you could say it's a little amazing okay here is another fun thing you could check out Look at this, and let me do my magic. Look at this. It's the same thing. If you look to the right and left, you can see the statues that here and here. This is stage. It has fewer steps in game though. No, I'm not saying that that's bad. Alright, so. This would be an extremely long run, man. Not interested in what you're selling, sir. Oh. I'm out of uh, normal arrows. How did that happen? guard and I could have easily fallen to my death there
And there's a shrine right there is where I want to go. more than in level. <laughs> yeah, I'm not focused anymore. I was talking about how people hate this because they fall to their deaths. That's exactly what happens. Becoming reckless. Blind. I forgot about my tools. I deserve that death. I could have had like what, two or three levels. I was trying to be stylish, but whatever. Yeah, the Kusarigama is not Kusarigama is not really my weapon of choice. I fooled around with it, but I'm not too used to it. Thank you. 
I'll go this way and shoot the other skeleton. Or not, actually. Let's just take care of the big one. Would you mind locking on? How, how is he alive after that? Like how? Explain to me. If you notice, every stream at the very end, I just end up making mistakes. I just want to light up the rest of the thingies and get the Kadamas. How he didn't die that time. Get up. Did we light up all of them? I don't think we did. I think over here. Kodama. And that's still not the last one.
Was that not at full health? Well, apparently not. Yeah, I'm just making mistakes left and right now. This stream should have been over. Just gonna run. Where did you come from? You weren't here last time. Spring here and a Kodama. Still not the last one. There, that door opens back to the Honden. Yep. That's every door open. I don't think I'll let up everything though. Here is the thing. You look at the map again. I think this would put us... That would be the north stage right in front of me. And uh, they actually do it, did have plays there. And usually in no stages, you would uh, you would have a water pot under the stage, so the sound reverberates. But in this one, the shrine is on water, so they can't really do that. 
So what they do is they had the whole stage made from one single piece of wood. And that acts like, you know how skin on the drum is, that's how it is. Fun little fact. Obviously the one here in the game is kind of different. Whatever, we'll let some lanterns. And that's fine. Let's go find the boss, shall we? That's a shortcut. This thing right there. And let's go find the boss. So I can call it today. It should have been finished 30 minutes ago. Obviously when I edit it, I'm gonna attend. It's in one cut. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it, it will mo the edit will be different. We're not going to spend as much time on the boss. But, um, you know, I should mention that the this shrine, or the whole island actually, was kind of considered sacred. And no deaths or births were allowed on it. Uh, and it said that um, when the whole incident, uh, or the whole battle took place here, the um, okay this isn't the best way to all right this is the best way to go uh motonari had uh, all the corpses removed and the buildings were all scrubbed and they cleaned the battlefield and even the blood soaked oil was completely removed from the island and the remains of harukata were taken back to the mainland and uh let's say this is his grave it's on the mainland if you ever want to go see it. It's only three lanterns, it's not four. Why, did, why was I thinking four? Okay. First thing. This. Second thing. This. And this. No, it's a storm. You can see the Tory gate right there behind him. Behind the boss. It's really beautiful if you go see it in real life. And this is why... I did the whole... Fire thing.
week to fire. It's a water enemy with his weak to fire. Yeah, this is a Tory gate. And I tweeted a picture of it in real life. When you visit the shrine at high tide, this is how you see it. It's like it's floating in the middle of water. But with low tide, you can actually walk close to it. Unless you're unlucky and you go to a shrine when it's being repaired. I know a guy like that, he traveled all, all the way to Japan just to see this and he got there and he was under repair and the whole thing was covered. Alright, so what we fought just now was the Umibozo. And uh, I was la lighting the lanterns because he throws... Well, you can actually come here and set your weapon on fire. But then that puts the flame out. Flame is useful because adds spawn from the water from those sides, and when they spawn, they uh, and they come in contact with fire and immediately die. If you imbue your weapon, flame is gone, and you can't do that. And it's the same thing with uh, if you don't la light the lanterns throughout the um, area, then adds will continuously spawn. If you notice, I didn't actually hit him at all my weapon whatever um i probably could have done it without it getting hit we used uh, four masks one of them was completely wasted though all of them were could have been used better though right so the omi bozo similar it translates as a sea priest and um sometimes it's called umihoshi or uminyodo and uh, you might be familiar with some ideas if you played Neo 2's DLC. Le legend differs based on uh, the region it comes from. Some regions uh, sacrifice the first fish caught on fishing trips to the gods to stop it from appearing. Other regions have them a bit like uh, sirens uh, who shapeshift into women and challenge men to a swimming race. And you die if you accept. So don't accept swimming races, kids. That's a mission done. Yeah, 30 minutes was wasted on nothing. Sawayama Castle. Alright, so we have to fight. Tongoku いま一度義を解こう。もはや六人目も見えず、下法で生きておるに、今さら聖堂を歩もうと神仏の救いは受けられます。前、この者が太宰府に秘匿された五国の霊石を見つけ、こたびの戦で役立てては、と申しておりまする。
on top of the explosion noises. Yeah, that could have been smoother towards the end. Bonjin, was it? Nice work. Bayakawa always keeps his promises. So I'll be glad to ask Murakami to fix your ship. Feel free to tell Lord Iyasu that he can count on us for help as well. Well, most likely anyway. The Mori clan is quite large after all. It can take time to build a consensus. This guy was a real coward. And you're gonna find that out later. Another mission. We added Way of the Warrior, Way of the Ninja, Way of the Omeo. Yeah, we're missing two Dama. Uh, I really should focus more while I'm playing, but it's just, as I say, reading, watching these, and paying attention to the environment, enemies, and fighting, it's, it's very distracting. Um, but as I said, this is work in progress. I'm recording this. I'm using the gameplay footage. And I'll probably re-record my voice over them. And edit them. Then upload them to... Hopefully YouTube. But I'll also probably upload it to... Twitch as well. Anyway, this is it for me. We've made... We've done two missions. These missions would have taken less than three hours, actually, if I was covering what I was covering. But um, next uh, next session, I will talk a bit about William and how he met uh, Iyasu, which is kind of silly because we don't really have much of uh, we don't have many images to show you or that. It's gonna be a cutscene. They're gonna talk about William, but this is around the time when William met with Iyasu. Well, we're going to cover Inamasa, the red demon. And we're going to have very fun missions because we're going to the spider nest castle. And also we are going the... We're going to be talking about a few other things like... Uh, Hashi Bridge. Sakata Kintoki. Ranjitai. And I don't know, I think we might have time for talking about the how Nobunaga died. We might, although that will be a very long mission, so it's kind of up in the air. We're gonna see how it, how it goes. Uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping by today, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.